What's going on, everybody? Simon here, Canada Footy News, with my boy. What's happening? It's Harry. And we are at the Ship and Anchor for the what you saw, the celebration for the PDL uh, Foothills FC winning the national championship. Seventy-four teams, only one. Yes. And that is Foothills. Not what a is, lot of Canadian teams in this league either. And no. Once I, again, I believe there's four, five total. And they were doing some numbers. There was out of the last 11 years, I believe there was only three times that it was an all-American final. So Canadians holding it down every time. No complaints. We're making our mark. We're doing what we do. Yeah. I mean, this is. Uh, it's, it was a massive year. It was. It was something that um, these guys strive from the beginning. I know when I went to, to England with them, and then when Harry came on board, and everything that's happened throughout this year has just been absolutely amazing. It's been a um, wild trip. Unbelievable. And that final game was just it couldn't have gone any better down 2 one tie it late take it to extras and win it it doesn't get better than that like this is what it's about and this is why we do this stuff it was crazy anybody who joined us at worst for that game like honestly thank you that was crazy we had the foot soldiers up with us we had a couple of the other guys we had nick with us he's on injury reserve it was a great game how do you complain it doesn't get better and that i don't think there could have been a better way to kick off close out the foothill season because let's face it and there's a lot of guys around here, but this is kind of the end of an era at Foothills now because all these, a lot of these boys are going to transition to the CPL. Wink, right? Uh, owners, uh, you guys should have been watching that game because some of these boys stepped up and they want that contract now. I think so. Uh, but it's not, it's not thick for that contract. They want that contract. Yeah. They proved what they wanted. They came out and did it. Yeah, and they, they all year long they did it. One loss all year. Every single well, the one playoff game was at home that we hosted. We did the right. live stream for, which we killed it. The live stream wasn't as good at Reading, but we'll just say. But that's neither here nor there. But I mean, they went out on the road, won two games, came back, and then I mean, just got the job done. What a great year! What a great season! Um, I don't know. I don't know if the boys would have asked for anything better than that. Uh, we, they knew what they wanted. They knew what the end result was. Let's move Foothills into the PDL. Let's push forward. Going forward, trying to get the Calgary FC. Come on, there's no other better way. Yeah, and these guys, they, these guys, they, I don't know what else to say. There's not much left to say. I mean, for Tommy, we'll have a little chat with Tommy. Maybe a couple of the players will try to get them in here. But really, where we're at, Tommy basically couldn't have ended in a better way. Now he transitions out of Foothills into Cavalry with the title. I mean, the one that he wanted. This is the one that he's been working for for four years. And the good thing is, as CFN, we've kind of been along for the journey for four years. I know my brother, a lot of times behind the camera, you don't see him. But he's been with us since, you know, the year two that Foothill started. And then Harry coming on board this year. But we're going to put some stuff together, a little bit of footage about what the journey's been. Because we got to give these guys a salute. End of an era. These boys worked for it. Now, they're going to that next level. Where every kid dreams and aspires to be one day. And that's that pro league, the CPL league. It's here. These boys did it. Virtually nobody's in the grand scheme of soccer, but now they all got it done and they all proved that they're worth it and that they're, this is this is what it's for. This is what that league is being built for. So it's just unbelievable. It's, it's, you know what? I, I don't want to transition and take the spotlight from Foothills right now, but there's been so much soccer going on in the city right now. We've seen so many people spotlighted. For example, yesterday we had Nations Cup here in Calgary. We have seen the, I guess it's the growth. We've seen how everybody's transitioned. <laughs> Toph, right. we got Toph, <laughs> Toph stepping in here. Hey, just a quick word. Since you're on, you're on the banter zone. You know already. I know already. So, uh, what do you got to say? Uh, not much. What do you got to say? Not much. You know, I came in three minutes, one assist, tied two two, four two champions were you scared Maybe. that tommy was not going to play you yesterday no was there like a thought in your mind no in my opinion it's all about this it's all about the mindset any athlete will tell you their mindset's really important you know our team is deep it's been this way all year so i started the first couple games of the season middle didn't play so much towards the end played a little but this is what it's all about i'm a team player when it comes first it's about the squad and i care about that first so i i my personal accomplishments aren't what I'm about, I'm about team, and the mindset's a powerful thing. It's important if you're starting or coming off the bench to be prepared to play whatever role you're needed to play in. So it showed again, we didn't have Moses, we didn't have Nick, we didn't have Jordan. Um, I'm sure we didn't have Jackson. I'm sure I'm missing some people, but 
that's what it's all about. Be prepared to play your role and play it to the fullest. Yeah, no, I have not seen, I've seen you play footy this whole season. You've done well. Thank you. But the last few minutes, as soon as Tommy put you on that field, yeah. you did not stop. No. You lit it up. It was lights out. Thank you. Appreciate that. I mean, he told me to go on and try and win the game for us. I didn't get the winner. Nico got the winner, but that doesn't matter. When you come on, like I said, that it's all about effect, you got, right. the Topher effect. The Topher effect. Right? You got to affect the game the right way. So, yeah. you no, know, I'm happy. I'm happy for my team. I played for this club since I've been like 13. So for me, hopefully I move on to the next stage. Um, that's what it's about, but it's been a great ride. Well, you guys are at now, you guys have all earned that spot now, that you guys have all earned that look based yeah. off what you guys have done this season, whether you were off the bench or starting. It doesn't matter, because when it comes down to it, even if you come off the bench, final minutes of the game, you help take that game the other way, yeah. and you guys won. Like you guys were, you know, all the hashtags are going out with the TOPA effect. Yeah. But you did it, you proved it the last time this happened. Yeah, I mean, it, there's been a lot of times, I think it's crazy, and I may be the only one who remembers, but I'm thank you for bringing that up. A lot of times where I come off the bench and I've had positive impacts, you know, and I got to credit that. And I, I got a coach that helped me with that. His name's Steve Simons, and he helped me with that a lot. Tommy's helped me with that a lot as a kid. Leon's helped me with that a lot. Just to keep building and making sure I'm ready to play whatever role. And you know, it's all about culture. Tommy preaches culture, and that's why he's successful. He wins, but he preaches culture. Culture is really important to him to be grateful but also to be a team player and know it's, a, it's about being selfless yeah. so I just want to say thank you and thank you for the opportunity yeah I mean you guys proved it all year long congrats bro you thank guys you, you guys uh, unbelievable man not much left to say appreciate it I'm no so one great. last question though yeah, yeah ask me, ask no me. offense taken here yeah yeah from the age of 13 till now, were you the same size? Nah, you know, I've grown a little <laughs> bit. I, it's the banter zone, right? It's the banter zone. I've grown a little bit. Not so much. I used to be skinnier, but I filled out a bit. I've grown a little bit, but you know, I'm happier in my height. Yo, but that hairline's still thick. It's hey? still crisp. Don't even. It's still crisp. It's your bald head. <laughs> I'm out. Okay, thanks, bro. Okay, Tope, the man. Uh, I mean, impactful every time, on the bench, off the bench. The guy's that, he's that character that you want on the field because, like you said, selfless. And, I mean, being, being with the club, like I said before, all the way from England to now and seeing what these guys are. No egos, no bullshit. Just let's go play, let's have fun, let's enjoy it. Let's get it to where we need it to be. But uh, maybe we'll get another couple people in here and uh, see if we can talk with Tommy because I'm sure Tommy's got a couple things he wants to talk about. True. But, but uh, before, we, before we sign off here, um, Nations Cup, let's go back to this. Oh well, yeah, that's right, that's right, Nations Cup. <coughs> Local everywhere. here in Calgary, we've seen this tournament go on for how many years now? Since we were young. Yeah, growing up, watching Nations Cup, always um, playing in it. It's, it's always good to see the different backgrounds of people, the different cultures come together. Uh, play a sport, of course, the biggest sport in the world, but yeah, it's just great to watch that happen. Yeah, uh, no. Yesterday was a good final. We watched Canada versus uh, Namibia. Yeah, and uh, I can't believe that their fans. Namibia fans were crazy, and there was a lot of them. Like they had a good number of people, and they stormed the field after, and it was just it was madness. But that's the kind of stuff where uh, I had the time to chat with the one of the Fijian coaches and a player, and he was telling me about. Uh, I asked him what the importance was of Nations Cup, and he was talking about that um, just the different cultures and him growing up as a first generation Canadian being with the people from his country that have grown up in other places, like you and myself, like you're first gen, I'm not, but my younger brother's first gen, like we were that close, right? I'm as Canadian as Canadian is pretty much. I've branded cattle, you know what I mean? Stuff like, but anyways. I eat cattle. <laughs> uh, but I mean, that's what it's about. It's bringing the cultures and seeing, you know, the old boys that used to play and getting the youth involved and still keeping that culture alive and how important this game is to us culturally, whether you are first-gen Canadian or not. It, it, it's going to be great, you know, with, with Foothills coming in now, they won yesterday, the hype that's going to be coming around Calgary, it's going to be crazy. I think the Nations Cup next year is going to be three times the size it was this year. So everybody, get your teams together. Start, oh, start practicing. We'll cut that out. But get out there. Let's go. Let's show the community. Let's show what we can do here. That's You got a little excited there. I did. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like I said, we'll see. We'll uh, try to grab a gaff and chat with Tommy. And then... Uh, we'll find some of the other boys. Yeah. There's other boys around, like Carducci there, the Roman wall standing right over there. So we might as well. We'll get, ah, we'll get him in here right now since we're over here. Once again, Marco, 
What's happening? What a game! What's up? What's up? You guys, we did it, eh? Unbelievable, it. man. What a year, what a year. Yeah. You're getting the no Roman wall started to kind of trend a little bit in the world of Marco and yeah. Foothills and in the soccer world now. I mean, you guys proved it with all the clean sheets. And, I mean, obviously the final game is going to be tough to get a clean sheet against a team like Reading. But what, yeah. what do you think, you know, um, it seemed like that Reading was a good team to play against. They had some quality players. you care to touch on them a little bit? Absolutely. They were um, a huge test, obviously. Credit goes to them. They uh, went undefeated all season. And they showed uh, the quality they had. It was obviously a, a tough match for us. And uh, as much as we wanted to keep that clean sheet streak going, we knew it wasn't going to be easy. And like I said, you know, they, uh, they gave us a very good game. So i got to ask you, when you guys conceded that second goal and they went up 2-1, what went through your head there? I'll be completely honest. Uh, I was a little, little bit worried. You know, there's less than 15 minutes left. They've scored, you know, it's like, okay, we're running out of time. But that was just a small, small fraction. Because I'm telling you, I knew we had more left in our tank. We've been through a lot this year. We've proved that in adversity, we really step up. And I was confident. I got the ball out of the net. I said, let's go. We got whatever it was, 12, 13 minutes left. We'll get something, and I was confident that we would, and it came in spectacular fashion. But you know what? I knew I knew we weren't gonna give up without a fight. What do you think? What do you think changed, or what do you what do you think made the difference in that 13th minute for you guys to come out, put two away that quick? Uh, I've said it a couple of times now. Mentally and physically, we're resilient, right? We fight. We don't stop. I mean, we've been training since January. A lot of us, right? We had the, the group together for a long time. So physically, we're fit, and I think that showed. But mentally, our core group, starting from Tommy and all the coaches, we're tough, right? We hung together. And I think when we had our backs against the wall, that showed and it was difficult, man. We were tired, they were tired, um, but we just kept fighting. We just kept fighting, we took control of the game. We got our two goals and we took them on the top. You know, I gotta say, even even watching the game when we were at worst, and there's about 60 to 70 people in worst, yeah. And when that second one went in, Harry looked at me and he's like, like he was he was <laughs> nervous. I'm like, no, it ain't over because this happened already before. Yeah. And there, no, this happened to them the opposite way where you know, but they're not letting it slide this time. And I mean that red card is a little unfortunate. For sure. Yeah, um, for sure. And then the other one, the other way was warranted, I would say. But yeah. uh, I mean, you guys definitely got the job done. A big congrats. I mean, it's nice to see. Some unfamiliar faces in this place here right. supporting. This so. is awesome, man. Oh, this is awesome. I think it goes to show the the culture we're, build, we're building, the community. It means a lot, right? And obviously, you got really exciting things coming next year in Calgary. You got the CPL, Cavalry. Um, for us to, to win this trophy and bring a bit more uh, hype to the scene, I think it's huge. And yeah, this this is amazing. This is awesome. Any la anything else? I only got one more thing to say, really, but are you pretty I'm good? Just, I'll, I'll say one thing. The Roman wall graphic, I don't know who, I think it was you, I think it was you. Amazing. All my family, all my friends are like, this is the best thing ever. That's I was awesome. like, man, I'm glad. Simon, I'm glad. I'm glad. Simon, my man. I'm glad. I'm glad. Thank you, glad. thank you. And yeah, I mean, I can't even remember what I was going to say now, because uh. I'm getting all emotional <laughs> now. But uh, yeah, huge congrats, man, you guys killed it. Oh yeah, the one thing I was going to say, and this is a question that's probably going to go unanswered, but what's next for Marco Carducci? Uh, Marco doesn't know for sure, um, but obviously I want to be here playing in the CPL next year. I want to be playing for the Cavalry and uh, hopefully in the next few months some things will move forward, but as of right now I'm just going to enjoy some time off, enjoy us putting in that hard work, winning the trophy, and we'll go from there. Well, you guys earned it, you guys deserved it. That next step is, you guys deserve that. Most of you guys did. So hopefully to, to seeing a lot of you guys playing that next step next year. It's going to be crazy. So again, congrats, brother. Thanks a lot. Thank you for your time, man. It's a great year, man. Great year. Thanks, guys. Outside the ship and anchor now. It's a little crazy inside, a little noisy. But as you look behind us, the guys that kind of held it down from the beginning, held it down from the start to the end, the foot soldiers, guys, what does this kind of mean for you guys? I'm going to start with Stuart because Stuart has been dealing with this, I mean, since how long now? Uh, since Calgary, Bo uh, Calgary Boomers in the late 70s, I think. So late 70s, you've been a supporter, yeah. and now you got your championship. So, I mean, what what, what really is left to say now? Uh, it uh, makes up for two years ago, definitely, <laughs> when we, we should have won the, the title. But this is amazing. <laughs> I can't believe it. We, we, still, we won it all. It's amazing. 
So what were your, you know, kind of thoughts on the final game there? I mean, all you guys were at worst, and worst is pretty, there's a lot of people there, and it was pretty good. So yeah. what was the atmosphere there like? And what, you know, what did that mean for you as a supporter starting at nothing, where, you know, you've kind of seen it come and go and come and go, and kind of what is it, you know, the difference now? Oh, it's, uh, we never had the support before. Uh, like the old days of the Calgary Storm and all that, we never had the fans like that out of the game. So this is uh, something that I haven't seen since I've been supporting the team. So it's incredible. Just love it. Think about that second goal there. It was a bit of a dog pile at the end after we won it 4-2. It was absolutely like, I know Mark was crawling around on the ground for a while. Yeah. <laughs> I think you jumped on his back, and then may I jumped have, on your may back. Have. Yeah. May have done, may have done. But it, it really meant a lot to us. It was a, it, It's one of those things where, as a Canadian soccer supporter, you, go th you don't just go through the motions. You know, any sport, anywhere, anywhere you go, you know, when you get to this moment, it's a big thing, and you get there, and you get the trophy, and, you know, tonight we got to well, go on the stage and hold that trophy. Yeah, and, and the thing is, like, I mean, two years ago, like, if two years ago didn't happen, we were right in there yep. watching the final two years ago where they lost, and the expect that, that made the expectations what they are now. Without that, we would be like, okay, we're in the final hold. This would have felt like two years ago if we didn't have two years ago, more or less, if I want to put it that way. Yep. But we were there when we know we're that good, and... And this time we got to actually win the final. I guess the big so, thing for me too is like, you know, four years ago, five years ago almost now, when we first met for our first meeting and a lot, everyone here, first first year, yeah. first meeting, you know, and we didn't really know who each other were. We just found out that Calgary had a PDL team coming in and we just decided, okay, well, if we yeah. want to support, we're going to support grassroots moving forward. Yeah, very haphazard online yep. sort of things that Sean Clark started. started. Yeah, Sean Clark, then, who's yeah, not here right so, now, yeah, so, he's uh, gone in Fiji. So th this is the three, the, the three of us, yeah, poor guy in Fiji. Right? Yeah, horrible. <laughs> but yeah, the three, the three of us and then uh, three others were there at that first meeting first ever. Fiddler's Courtyard. Yep. Yeah, yeah, Fiddler's Courtyard. We got the server to take a picture of us. Like, this is the beginning. Yeah. We, I don't think any of us expected us to be here. Four years no, later. four years later. And I, I think I think going forward, I mean, I don't want to talk about the Canadian, Canadian Premier League going here because it's a Canadian, it's a PDL night. It really is. Yeah, yeah. But it's just suffice to say, to say that it's going to be pretty much the best year of Canadian soccer going forward that we've ever had. Since 86. Yep. Since 86, right. So yeah, nice. what, what can we expect from you guys next season? Is it going to be louder? Is it going to be crazier? We're, we're, more we're more going to be more. We right. have plans, and a lot of them are secret. A lot of them are secret. We got some banners. We got some TFOs. We got oh, some stuff perfect. going forward. And we're we, we be have doing a Facebook things. chat with a bunch of us, but one of the guys is an FC Ed guy who has been supporting the Foothills. So we have to keep some stuff secret from you. Yes. Sean, man. <laughs> who um, happens to be FC Edmonton? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so like, yeah, but, but no, we, we, have, we have plans for everything under the sun in terms of what football support is. And my goal, is, my goal is to be the best in Canada at this. We'll still do some of the Cal Calgary uh, PDL games as well. We're going to come out there. We're going to support I mean, that. Home opener, but we're going to be moving forward to, PD yep. to Canadian Premier League. We're supporting Tommy. And a lot of these players are going to be there too. We know that. Yes. And, you know, we just got to support soccer in Calgary in every form. That's really it. Well, we want to invite Calgary to come out and rally around this team. There's a bunch of, you know, there's different ways to be a supporter, whether it's just family, whether it's hardcores like us, or, you know, you're in between. Come on, give the Cavalry a try, and yeah, let, let's build something that has everybody written all over show Calgary up, and Canada. Up, yeah. Show up and have fun, and frankly, if you've been to Spruce Meadows and seen the pitch that we're going to be playing on, it's beautiful. It's be the best you, you get a lot. You get a lot of MLS teams that have NFL and MLS stadiums, and people complain about the grass. It's like our groundskeepers deal, deal with ball. horses. Yeah, we are. We're good. A little bit better. We're yeah, I mean, and really, what is there left to say? Except there, there's one more that's about to step in. So. What is oh, that? Oh, yeah, John. John, John, John to throw in his quick, quick cowboy hat quick amongst two us, cents but John on wears it pretty well. the experience and everything that's kind of gone on. <laughs> We're clamped. Oh, I think I, I, I can't even. Oh, I'm so happy right now. <laughs> We got a little Shakespearean, but we're good. It's a little emotional, but these guys are what it's about. Now it's I mean, me and Harry doing what we're doing, yes. and these guys all stepping forward. So a huge shout out to these guys, the foot soldiers, and then moving into the CPL, and then it, also one thing a lot of people need to realize when 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 these guys get together, it is a lot of work to put together. It's a commitment. They come out together, they make sure they are together as a team, they're bound together, and they move forward. They help create the culture. No. Um, so, uh, yeah. I mean, really, what's left to say? We'll chat with Tommy here, and then uh, 
Thank you guys for your time and really appreciate the support, guys. Thank you guys. Always, always happy to have the game promoted. Yeah. Thanks for uh, Thank you. Thank you guys luck, guys. really appreciate that as well. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thank you. Guys. Really, what else is there left to say, but what does this mean to you? Right now, uh, champion. I mean, it's uh, something we've talked about a long time. It's, uh, it's all part of the journey, right? It kind of sounds cliche, but 2016, we said we'd always look, look to compete in the first three years. We got to final in two. We won it in four. Um, for me personally, it's the last way to sign out, which, you know, from a club that's meant the world to me, from a group of players that mean immense, but look at people around here. We're growing something bigger. You're growing it with the, what you're, the work you guys are doing. You know, just sat there talking to Adam as the young gaffers, the foot soldiers, the sponsors, the media. Thank you. Cool. There you are. We're growing a community. Everyone's part of it. We put something out, you know, impromptu and look at this. Everyone, everyone's enjoying it because we're telling a story. So, I mean, kind of moving forward now, a massive chapter is closing for you now. Massive. And moving forward, an even bigger one is about to open. So, I know that transition is going to be kind of tough. You need to get away now. This Close this chapter properly. Yeah. Get your time. Relax. That well-earned vacation because you guys have been doing this since January. Yeah, yeah. Um, eight months, nine months in. And, I mean, obviously, yeah, all the behind-the-scenes stuff that happened before. So, really, what is this? How... All I can ask you is, what is it, how does it, what does it mean for you to close this out the way you have? I, honestly, I couldn't have wanted it better. Um, you know, I'm going to pop my head in and watch some of the uh, provincials as, as I finish off mine. You know, in September, my I'll go full time with the cavalry. But what pleases me, obviously, the silverware, but is the structure and the infrastructure that's built. Because I was handed when I was handed the keys 11 years ago. For Tills, we had like 400 players. Uh, you know, we're about three, three and a half thousand. Got its own field house. Got national championships. Kids that have gone on to college. Kids in the pro game. Kids just playing because they still love to play and now adults. Um, I get to hand the keys over to Leon, which I did in Legacy Night. Couldn't want a better person to carry this on with his energy, enthusiasm, professionalism. You know, there's a great infrastructure of people around him with Troy, Colin, Tuxy, Clevs, Jay. They're ready now to make it theirs. Um, and I get to call upon them, you know, get to use, you know, them as a pipeline of players that's going to feed into cavalry. It's, uh, you know, them amongst other clubs in the city. I know that there's a great breed of success that's that's there. And it's, a, it's a culture that we're going to keep going. I mean, very successful season. Okay, I understand the, the goal behind every season is to get out there, do your best, and hopefully win this beautiful hardware. But next next season starting. Going to the Calvary, changing the name. What can we expect? Well, it's a it's a new group. Um, you know, with Spruce Meadows Sports and Entertainment Group, you've got a world class group. Um, you know, they they don't do anything with half measure. You know, they they've created champions. If you think back to the actual story of the Southern family, Mr. Southern built Spruce Meadows because he wanted somewhere for his daughters to to perform. Um, realized that there wasn't many opportunities for Canadian riders, so he built a world class venue. And now Canadians were time and time again winning world championships, being on the Olympic podium. They get behind Canada like like nobody else I've seen. It has its own entertainment district. If you if you come down there, uh, they're passionate passionate about sports. If you look at you know CEO uh, you know Linda, um, Ian, Allison, um, these people mean serious business and they're massive supporters. So while I get to move across to that, I know I'm in, inheriting a, you know a DNA that is wired to improve Canadian sports and put on a show and uh, I couldn't hope for a better group to go and work with. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing last night was a crazy night, kind of looking over near the trophy. You might see a glass of water there. Oh, would you know, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I came home earlier. Uh, it was myself, my wife, Lloyd the physio, Jordan Santiago, the keeper coach, and my son. We came home at 9.30. I had a shower, I put my boy to bed and fell asleep right next to him, so uh, I was exhausted. Um, I'm drinking water just because I'm thirsty and keep playing catch up from the traveling. It was like a 10 hour day of traveling. So tonight is, you know, once we've done all the interviews, I'll have a couple more beers with the people that have been a great part of it. But man, it's uh, the boys had a good time, I think, the night before, and, uh, and rightly so. You don't win championship trophies like that very often, so you got to enjoy the moments. Do we see any crazy additions to the team next year? Is there anybody else that you may see that can come onto the team and possibly make it? Well, absolutely, because, I mean, the PDL will still stay. Um, 
you know, with Calgary Foothills because it's a great farm system. Seattle Sounders, Portland Timbers, they all have it because it hits that college age group players. We want to hit those you know, top college age players um, and that's what we'll have. But for me, if I can take a core of these guys with me, which I will, you know, that gives me a foundation to build on in terms of cultural, playing identity and, an eth and a championship winning ethos. But, you know, I'd be delusional if I thought I didn't need some, you know, click upgrade buttons. There's pros out there, pros that are seasoned, hardened, it's a different level. You know, we're not going in there and playing against, you know, college level players or, you know, pro-am. We're playing hardened pros that it's their livelihood that they're after. So we will be signing full-end professionals. I'm going to be signing, you know, I'm looking to sign some international caliber players as well. Um, and then anything I can't find locally, nationally, I'm going to look internationally to give us some marquee players that will put bums on seats and win us some football matches. That's, that's great. I mean, that's kind of what we, we always hoped that we would get in Canada, something yeah, yeah. that we can build a base as a foundation of our yeah, own yeah. and then just reinforce it with whatever else we can, bringing in those pros as seasoned yeah, yeah. veterans. Um, but really, I mean, that the way that this kind of year has gone with the way you guys were, the World Cup, mm -hmm. all of the announcements with the, with the CPL launching, every stone seems to be falling in the right place, especially for the game in Canada, but mm -hmm. closer and even better locally in Calgary. I'd say maybe a little bit of a biased opinion, but that you guys are going to hit the ground running, I think. I think so. I mean, I mean we're all waiting now to see um, what happens to Ottawa Fury. You know, they're signing a lot of Canadian players. They haven't come out and said whether in, out or otherwise. Um, we'd love to have them in the league because FC Edmonton is already an established brand. You know, they just have to pick up the phone and bring back some players they've had. So, you know, they went dark, but they're also very smart. Um, they're going to be a great rivalry. We're a young team. But we're also hungry. Um, so for me, I'd love to see Ottawa Fury in it because that gives you something to really go at. They're signing Canadian players like the, it's going out of fashion. So. You know, they're making their, their moves. Um, we've got the young, hungry players. But I also know my, my friends and associates at, at Valor FC and Rob Gale, he was a U20 national team coach. His Rolodex is full of young players. You know, Stephen Hart at Halifax, solid, solid guy, national team coach. He's not only just got the Canadian national team, Trinidad and Tobago national team, he's got a deep Rolodex. And Jimmy Brennan, Jimmy Brennan's a veteran. He's a great guy. He's also a lethal competitor. And you've got Rob Friend and Josh Simpson out of Pacific. These guys are a key, and then you also have to look at Hamilton. Hamilton, you know, they're the founders of this league. They were, they maybe had a head start and have kept things very close to their chest. So these are going to be worthy and great adversaries, um, and we're going to do our work, and then we'll reveal our cards. You know, come the start of the season in April, and let the games commence. So last question out of me. Okay, what, what's your role next year? What are you going to be doing? What are you going to be doing for the team? Just sum it up. So so for me, it's um. No, I've, I've had a, an apprenticeship in it really with Calgary Foothills when I took on, I was a technical director in name, but I've become a general manager in terms of the PDL stuff, um, a head coach, court laundry man, kit man, whatever it took to be successful, that, that's why I had to be. My role with um, the Cavalry as of the, you know, the four, I'm the general manager. So part of it is building the team together. You know, I've got to put a team around me, I've got to put a team on the field, and I've got to build a culture and a playing identity. I'm also going to be the head coach, so I've got to make the final decisions, miss the 51%. So I'm fortunate, you know, you know, Martin Nash will come with me, who's an exceptional coach and guy. You know, I've had people like Leon Apke, Jordan Santiago, and, and um, Lloyd Webber, who've been physio. These guys are my guys. Um, and, you, know, and, you know, one general can't win a war, nor can one foot soldier. It's an army. So I've got to build the army around me, and that's going to be my duty. So the off-season now, Harry, to answer your question, is I've got to build my team on and off the field. Perfect. So I would guess you're kind of uh, almost bringing your own cavalry with you, so to say. Didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, look, it is. And that's uh, it for me. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> but uh, I mean, congratulations. I couldn't see a more deserved group of people. I mean, me, biased again because so close with you guys over the last couple of years. But oh, you've been everywhere, play. right? It's, and this is what's cool. You've got a story to tell. So. You got hours and hours of footage, and we had some good times, some dark times. You know, on the road to Portland, which you were there. You know, going to England, which you were there. You know, you've done post-game interviews, pre-match videos. You've done a motivational. The boys used your one there with the line of the last hunt. 
you know, this is this is all part of telling the story, and you guys have been great with that, and you've told our story, and you've been out there in the community telling it, and people are hearing it, and you look now at the response, people are buying into it, so you've had a big part to play in this, and the boys have appreciated all the love you've shown them. So look, on behalf of us, you're part of this silverware too. So thank you. No, I thank you. I mean, you guys giving us the opportunity to be here and throw a camera in your face and harass right. you guys every chance we get, and ask you those hard-hitting, annoying questions that you probably get all the time and you're tired of hearing. But once again, Tommy, congratulations. I'd let you drop the mic, because that's the only thing yeah, that's yeah, left I to know. do here, but you're not that's, dropping this thing. It's too expensive. The that's man it. behind the gear. Drop, drop. <laughs> Wheeled it out. <laughs> we cared to swing on down, 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 and stop. You know what I'm saying? So he could get on. Now this is what we do. We playing, we playing the role of that sweet chariot. And we swinging down to pick you up. You up.